Never mind. About two weeks ago, there was a data breach in the Netherlands, and all a couple of researchers did was change the ID number and the URL parameter of this web application of a car loan company. And they could see all of the customers' personal information, their income, their home address, information about their children, etc. And that's why I think that if you care about whether or not your personal information, your income, your home address, information about your children is out there in the open, you should care about valid security and privacy testing. After all, our daily commitment is to secure the privacy of our clients' clients, which means you. That's why I want to explain to you the difference between security and privacy testing. Now, a key difference is uh, in security, we have a hacker mindset. We focus from the perspective of a hacker. While in privacy testing, we use the data, subject, and company uh, relationships to focus on. Now, today I want to talk to you about technical privacy testing because the GDPR is coming at us with the speed of light. And as Edward's presentation yesterday already showed, not a lot of companies are ready for this yet. But still, even if you're a skeptic like myself because this regulation is aiming for the stars, buckle up. It's the law, and the fine starts at 20 million euros. So better be prepared for this. So how do we conduct technical privacy testing? Well, for once, we base it on valid sources and best practices, such as uh, experiences of our colleagues in the field, I'm supposed to represent my colleague, <laughs> and uh, items such as uh, OWASP and the GDPR. Now, a couple of important steps we take while conducting a technical privacy test are laid out here, and I'm going to cherry pick uh, a couple of the most important ones to explain to you what exactly it is that we do. Starting with privacy by design. Privacy by design is a concept where you pay special attention to privacy throughout the entire system engineering process, which, <laughs> which means uh, we could take a look at your privacy requirements and see if they're implemented correctly or not. Next up we take is privacy by default, which means do you work on a need-to-know basis with your staff? Best way to go about it is uh, to form a access control matrix, a data authorization control matrix, see who can access what, or can your lunch lady see everything. Well, an important step is data classification because it's the foundation for other principles as well. And I'll show you about that in a minute, but uh, the GDPR classifies data as personal, special, and non-personal data. In general security testing, uh, that also means that um, pictures of your dog do not need the same regulations as your pin code unless you use image steganography to send it to some Disney villain or something. <laughs> so profiling. This is a category where uh, data categorization and classification is vital because it shows you how to profile your data. Personal data, you should anonymize. Non-personal data, you don't have to. Special data, you do not even have to collect. You may not. Same goes for encryption. Foundation is data classification. Make the difference between personal and non-personal because you need to encrypt your personal data. Another trend that we see going on right now and that we expect a lot from in the future is data leakage. The prevention and the detection of data leakage. So we could also test your company's SIEM or syslog, for instance. Well, the next step is something that's very important generally in life, but also in technical privacy testing, consent. Do you really hold up to your privacy or cookie statement? We could test that. And the way we go about that is, do you really process your data in the way you promised your customer to do? Or do you use it for a couple of more other things? Last but not least, it's the right to be forgotten, right, right to erasure. If a company no longer uses your information, you can send them an email saying, I want you to delete my data, and they have to comply by that. Now, I get that the GDPR and technical privacy testing are somewhat complicated, and especially for the implementation. So I have a couple of references and some information where you can find a lot more about this so you can conduct it in real life. So let's recap really quickly. Technical privacy testing is important for you as a data subject, for you and your company for GDPR compliancy, and I've told you a little bit about the steps we take when we conduct a technical privacy test. 
Now, yesterday during the open space, I noticed that there were a lot of questions regarding this topic, and five minutes is way too short to talk about this. So please use my information. You've seen my Twitter handle come by a couple times, tweet me your questions. But for now, Paul Diaz for listening. Thank you. And quick reward for you.